Welcome back to the channel. In today's tutorial, it's all about linear takeoff. In our last session, we uh, talked about area and how some of the different options with area allows you to do different things. Well, it's the same with uh, linear. Besides the simple linear tool, there's some pull-down options. We're going to go over how to use the linear tool for everyday takeoff and then how to use some of those predefined options that PlanSwift gives you. Let's get to it. All right, I know if it was me, the first question I would have would be, what's the difference between a linear takeoff and a segment takeoff? They're both about lines, right? Yes and no. They are both about lines, but how they work is differently, and we're going to show you that right now. We've got two examples of uh, takeoffs uh, we've done. One's a linear and one's a segment, and if we click on the first the linear one we see when we click on it it shows all four lines or the four lines that make up the box now each one of those lines is a segment in itself but the takeoff was continuous if i click on the segment example we see that's just a segment it's just a singular line think of it this way if you want to take off a linear measurement you're taking off something like this box here where you're going to encounter corners or other places where the line is going to take a different direction, but you want to continue doing the takeoff. You don't want to stop and start, stop and start. So items that would be continuous uh, could be the perimeter of a building, could be uh, falling sidewalk around a, a block, it could be uh, a continuous plumbing trench, Anything where the line keeps on going and breaks off in different directions, that's a good example of a linear takeoff. Segment takeoff, think of it as being this box, like we're seeing linear, but broken up into four different areas. Now, I want to take off all four of the lines, but the lines are not continuous. So where I'm taking off and want to add all that linear footage together, the segment tool is a better, better example. And we're going to show you right now practical examples of linear takeoff and segment. So let's zoom back out. All right. If I wanted to take off the perimeter of this, this is a uh, slab plan. I want to take off the perimeter for, of the slab to get the idea of, let's say I'm taking it off for expansion material that would go between the new slab and the old slab. I would probably use a linear takeoff. So we're going to go up here, we're going to click on linear, the icon, not the drop down, and it's going to bring up a dialog box and I would say you want to name the takeoff. I'm going to say slab perimeter and I can change whatever color I want to, blue, and click OK and I start the takeoff and it's going to allow me to, if I wanted to go around boxes, I could go around things like this. I'm going to back up. For purposes of this, I'm just going to create a simple box. And as you see, as I click left, click to end that line, it continues drawing another line. And that's the difference between linear and segment. If it was segment, it would have stopped it, and I would have to position the mouse for the beginning of a new line. This just allows me to make a turn. There again, I've got a turn I'm going to make, so I'm going to click on that, and move around the box, and click on that, and end it. And I've got a new slab perimeter that says 191 feet, or 191 lineal feet. Good example of a segment, which we're going to have a whole next tutorial will be all about segments. But just to show you the difference, I've got basically uh, control joints I need to saw cut into this new slab. And a segment would be a different, or, or should I say, a better tool for using for that. So I'm going to click on segment, and I'm going to say control joint. change the color if I want to 
And now I'm going to first point, left click, second point, and I'm still in the segment tool. I'm still taking off segments, but it stopped. It didn't continue the line. It wants me to reposition for a new start and a new end and on and on and on. And I can keep doing that until I hit the escape or the stop button. And when we talk about the stop button in our tutorials, we're talking about the digitize record, the red button or light. Basically, go up there and click it off so it's no longer red and you've stopped the takeoff. So what else can I, once I do a linear takeoff, what else can I do with it? Well, you could right click on the properties, go into advanced, and you could go to the quantity field. And we see where it, it picks up the uh, linear footage. It picks it up from the takeoff field. And it says 190.95. If I didn't like decimals, I could go up to the uh, icon here, which is the insert special, special, and round it up. Click the round up or round down button, which would take off the decimals. If I wanted to say, OK, I've taken off the perimeter, but now I know I've got a CMU wall I'm going to put up there. I don't want to use this lineal footage and simply turn it into a square foot tool for the wall. Very easy to do. If you're comfortable doing Excel uh, formulas, this is no different. I'm going to say take off and I'm going to go up here and here's my operators up at the top. I'm going to say times and I know this wall I want to build is going to be 8 feet tall. I put an 8. Now, because I'm now changing from a linear to a square footage, I come over here to my input units, and I'll see it's a scale units, and I can change it from feet to square feet. If I don't do that, I might think later on that this is actual a linear footage measurement when I've actually changed it to a square footage measurement. And I can say next, I can change the title here and say wall area. And now I have a wall area calculation. If I wanted to, uh, uh, let's say later I find out that, well, this is not going to be a CMU wall, but it's going to be a concrete, a cast in place wall. I could say wall volume, and watch what I do. If I could spell. And I'm going to take, now I need to add a third dimension to it to change it from square footage to a volume. Uh, this is going to be an 8-inch CMU wall, so I'm going to go ahead and hit my times operator. And because I'm working with feet already, I need to keep it in feet, so I'm going to convert 8 inches to feet, and that would be 0 0.67, close enough. And I'm going to change the square feet to cubic feet. And now I've got 1,023.49 cubic feet of wall that's going to be bored. My, I get a call from my uh, ready mix salesman and he says, well, how many cubic yards of concrete are you going to need? And I go like, oh man, do I have to retake this off? No. I just go back into properties and I could say, Rather than cubic feet, I need it in cubic yards. And watch how easy it is doing plans with. Rather than, I could change the formula. Now, I could go in there and say divided by 27. Most people will know that would give you cubic yards. Or I could even simply just go over, you've got two units in plans with your input unit and your output unit. Normally the same. If you want to convert from one unit to another, simply go to your output unit, click on that box, you'll see a down arrow and just drag the bar and get to what you want, in this case, cubic yards. And it instantly changes into cubic yards. And click OK. Now over here to the side, I says wall volume, 37.9 cubic yards. But for those that don't, are not comfortable yet in modifying formulas in plans, then that's really what we did. 
we went into the properties and we'll just go back to it for a second and we took the takeoff which was the lineal footage and we put in a formula made it into a formula that basically says takeoff times 8 which was the height of the wall times 0 0.67 which was the thickness of the wall and we it converted it that made a cubic foot which we then had plans with to convert into cubic yards so how can I uh, calculate wall square footage or cubic yards of concrete uh, if I'm not comfortable with editing or creating formulas PlanSwift gives you a couple neat little tools that's built into the version you have you should be on version 10.3 XX whatever the micro version is and go into go back to your lineal tool and pull down we're going to skip single click linear for now because we're going to have a whole session on single click linear but go down to click on wall area and when you click on that you'll get a dialog box and it has two tabs on it general which it expects you to enter information and appearance which is just where you pick your colors and things of that nature so we're going to pick a different color we're going to pick red go back to general now for this to work correctly we do have to enter some information so under wall height it gives some pre-selects 8, 9, 10 you can override that by typing in your own let's say it's 9 and a half feet you can type that in this is just a convenience for pulling down and and picking the height of the wall uh, number of wall size well what is that all about on an interior wall where you may have a wall come out like for your dining room it may have sheetrock on both sides so if you're building a wall and that's what we're doing here and you've got sheetrock on both sides we would change it from one to two now we're not going to do that on this but that's it simply doubles the square footage is really all it does so if you got a two-sided wall you pick two you got a one-sided wall you pick one and then the width the width has some predetermined sizes in here and we're going to go we'll click five and a half or 5.5 .5, and click OK and now we're going to draw what should be a sheetrock wall and we're just going to follow what we've done and you see as I click on the corner a linear measurement is going to keep in that mode of wanting to draw a line each time I click until I press escape or stop now that we've drawn these walls we can see that these lines are thicker than the blue lines we did before under just the basic linear tool and that's because this particular tool is drawing the wall the thickness of what you said the wall was and that's so you can better place it if we had told it it was a 12 inch wall then basically you would have drawn the line even thicker and those thicknesses of lines are determined as a parameter in your advanced box you can change the way the line shows up in the center left right and you can also change the width of the line should you want to but for right now if we look to the our navigation now it says wall area 1527.6 and we didn't have to go and do anything in the uh, formulas it already this particular one is already built for for calculating wall area the other pull down we've got would be a good tool for using if you were having to uh, figure out uh, concrete you you're a poured wall contractor and you're taking off uh, cast in place walls and you simply want some a simple tool that's basically going to tell you how many cubic yards or volume do I have so we click on the linear tool we go to linear cubic yards and a few different questions than before there's no more it's not questioning about how many sides of the wall it is but that's really more for uh, sheetrock contractors this basically asks you to name the wall so we're going to say CIP interior wall it wants you need to give it 
say what height it's going to be. So we're going to say this wall is 10 feet tall. And the width. What is the width of the wall you're pouring? We're going to say 8 inches. We can change the color once again to whatever color we want to. And click on OK. And once again, we're back in our linear tool mode where we're going to start. Click on the first and second click is going to continue. And you can see this time that our line is being displayed thicker than before. And why is that? Because we said that this line is 8 inches. The other line was uh, 6 inches, I believe. No, 5 and a half inches. So now, this particular takeoff, and we did virtually the same takeoff all three times, this now tells us we got 47.1 cubic yards. It's a little different than our other wall volume one we did, but we gave it different parameters. So, basically to recap, if you're just doing a simple linear measurement where you want to click through the corners and keep on measuring, because whatever you're measuring is continuous, then the linear tool will do you just fine. If you need to calculate wall area, then by answering a few questions, you will have your wall area. And even though I think this was set up initially for sheetrock contractors, uh, you could just as easily use this tool for uh, CMU or other kinds of uh, of interior walls and of course the linear cubic yards would be great for doing any kind of concrete walls. Now you could take these ones that you've uh, that PlanSwift has given you and it would not take a lot for you to convert them into something you could reuse every day which is a template and when we get into our advanced features we're going to show you how to how to take off something using an original PlanSwift tool and then make that into your own template so you can reuse that over and over and over and save yourself a lot of time, as well as being able to set up your, your unit pricing or whatever, or whatever costing that you have for those items. So just remember, if you want to draw, measure continuously a line, your linear is your best choice. If you're measuring lines that are not connected to each other, then segment is your next choice. See you next time.